for the entire length of the investigation, they have said there's nothing there, despite what the entire intelligence community said, that the Russians were involved. They were the ones that hacked into the democratic process. There was unanimity there, and the president disagreed with his entire community. And since they've done, they have done nothing but attempt to get in the way of the investigation, if not obstruct. So it's not surprising that any development that takes place uh, they attempt to minimize. I know that you're a former defense attorney, so can you give us a sense of what level, on what level, Mike Flynn might be cooperating with the Mueller team? Well, typically in uh, prosecutions like this and in investigations like this, uh, defense teams do share information with each other. Uh, obviously, if one of those uh, teams decided that they were going to try to uh, come together with some sort of negotiation or plea deal, they'd have to cut off those discussions with other teams. That's what we've seen here. It is not absolute proof that that's what's taking place, but clearly because of a potential conflict of interest, they would have to cut ties uh, communicating with the Trump legal team. So it gives you some indication. Obviously, General Flynn has exposure, failing to register as a foreign agent, uh, making false statements to government officials. Uh, there's a long list, taking money without permission from foreign entities. So uh, obviously he has exposure, uh, and in almost always when there's an agreement here, the prosecutors require uh, cooperation as they move forward. Hmm. Uh, what about Donald Trump Jr.? As you know, he followed up on a recent tweet that he sent revealing his communications with WikiLeaks. He had an Instagram post saying, more nothing burgers from the media and others desperately trying to create a false narrative. Keep coming at me, guys. So what is your reaction to this apparent taunting in the, in the middle of this very serious investigation? Yeah, it's, it's honestly something like father like son. Uh, I don't think, and I, I've watched this for a year and a half, that any of these investigations are coming after anyone. They're genuinely trying to find out what took place. This is the most important investigation in our lifetime, and that includes Watergate. In many hmm. respects, it's far more sinister than Watergate because it involves a foreign power, a foreign power, power that uh, Senator McCain says, and we have to remind the president of the United States, is not our friend, is not our ally. It was trying to attack liberal democratic institutions, including our election process. So uh, I would say to Donald Trump Jr., no one's after you. We simply want the truth. And at this point in time, you haven't been forthcoming. We look forward to your willingness to cooperate so we all know exactly what took place. How about what's happening this week? Because I know that you and your committee will be interviewing Attorney General Sessions behind closed doors. It happens Thursday. And as you know, he had an open hearing with the House Judiciary Committee early last week. So what more do you want to learn from AG Sessions at this point that you hope will clear things up for you? Yeah, and officially, I can't say who's coming before us, but there's a lot more information I'd certainly like to know from the Attorney General. I mean, he seems to be able to say at his convenience, oh, I just didn't remember that. At some point in time, he has to be willing to acknowledge responsibility. There's got to be some accountability here. It can't be, oh, yeah, there was one more, right? At the beginning, under Senate testimony, he said he had no contact with Russians. And obviously, we've learned of at least three, in, three times in which that wasn't the case. And he wasn't aware of anyone else communicating with Russians. There's at least two times when that wasn't the case. Uh, as the Attorney General of the United States, our lead law enforcement officer, he has to be the one, above all, willing to give us the truth. Now, look, I, I want to be very clear. I'm not going to ask you to leak or reveal confidential, confidential information, but can you give us any sense at all of what becomes the focus of your investigation when you come back to work in January? It's the same as it always was. We're reviewing documents. We're interviewing witnesses. Um, we're following the Mueller investigation and seeing what leads that might create for us to go forward. Uh, I just tell people who are following this so closely, be patiently impatient. It's going to take some time. It is so important, and I certainly want to message to those who aren't clear on what this is about. Uh, this isn't Benghazi Investigation 2.0. We're doing this the right way. We're following the facts wherever it takes us. We really do want to find out the truth here. 
I would encourage my re Republican friends, you ought to be just as concerned as anyone else because they hacked into boards of election. They were trying to alter results. Whether they did or not doesn't matter as much as they were trying to do that. And we can imagine scenarios in which the Russians were trying to attack uh, Republicans running for office. So uh, we ought to all be just as concerned as anyone else as to what took place. How do we make sure it never happens again? And hey, was there cooperation mm. from the Trump associates? Given um, the job description and the history, would White House Communications Director Hope Hicks be someone you might be interested in speaking with? Well, I, I think just about everyone who had communications, uh, ongoing discussions with the associates that we've talked about so far, at least nine that have had we are aware of had direct communications with the Russians or bragged about that. So uh, obviously uh, that makes sense as well. I think what happens is when folks say to me, are you connecting the dots? Uh, often when we interview people, we learn about more dots. It's mm -hmm. exactly why this is going to take longer than people want. I suspect there might be 30 or 40 more people that we need to interview before the process is over. Unfortunately, I, I think there's a rush to judgment here. We're talking now about uh, Mr. Kushner coming back to testify in, uh, in front of our committee. That was rushed in the first place uh, at his request uh, over our objection. Clearly, we understand if we don't have all the documents, these interviews aren't going to go as well as they should. We saw uh, with Mr. Page's transcript of being released just how important having documents in front of you to make sure we can find out exactly what took place when we interview people. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.